What's up guys, in today's video we are going to go over how to use the Shine Supply Boat Maintenance Kit along with several other tips and tricks and we're also going to go over how to use a DA polisher on your boat if you'd like to learn that as well. Let's get into it. So let's give you guys an overview on what actually is in the kit. So let's start with the products for the interior. So we have our solution, multi-purpose cleaner. This is for heavier soil that you're gonna have on your boat seats. If it's been a while since you've cleaned the inside of your boat, you're gonna wanna start with the solution multi-purpose cleaner. This is gonna give you a deep cleaning on your seats, a lot more cleaning ability than the sun setter. So the Sun Setter has a light cleaning ability, but it's gonna be heavier on the conditioning side. So this is more of your maintenance product. Every time you go out, when you come back in from the lake, you could give your seats a quick wipe down with the Sun Setter. It's got a nice UV guard in it. It's gonna provide some protection. And again, light cleaning ability. So heavy cleaning with the solution, maintenance with the Sun Setter. All right, next up in the kit, we have our Wake Up One Step Polish and Protection. So this stuff is ceramic fortified, so it's got ceramic fortified raw materials in it. So it's gonna have that really durable protection for your boat. It's not gonna break down in the heat like a carnauba wax would. It's gonna be a lot more durable than your traditional paint sealant. But one thing that's cool about Wake Up, being that we call it the One Step Polish and Protect is that it's got some abrasives in it. So this is actually gonna do a great job to clean off light oxidation on your boat. It's gonna clear up light defects that your gel coat gets in it during the season. It's going to really restore and enhance that gloss, give your boat a really deep shine and provide excellent protection. So you can use this as standalone protection, meaning you don't have to do anything else to your boat or you can use this product right here to maintain a boat that has been ceramic coated. So if you have a boat that has our beadlock marine coating on it, you know, mid season, you develop some defects or some stubborn, stubborn water spots that are not coming off with your traditional wipe down. You can grab wake up applicator pad, rub out those areas or even go over the whole boat without stripping off your coating and it's going to rejuvenate that surface and then build the protection up even greater. So next up is our Punch It Ceramic Detailer. If you guys know this product, some of you probably do. It works incredible on vehicles, but we've also found it to be excellent to really boost the slickness and hydrophobic properties of your watercraft boat, jet skis, etc. So what we like to do is when we put on a coat of wake up, you know, we take off the wake up, we like to go over the boat with the punch it. it makes it super slick, really hydrophobic, helps the cleanup once you get off the lake because this is stacked up even more protection on the surface. All right, and then lastly in the kit, we have our Aftermath. It's a water spot remover slash quick detailer. So what this is gonna do when you get off the water from the day, you're gonna grab you a nice microfiber towel. You're gonna to go over the boat. It's gonna get off all the water spots from the day. But what the, what's unique about Aftermath is it's not just gonna get the water spots off and leave your boat dried out. It's actually gonna add gloss and it's gonna enhance the existing protection. So it's got two functions, getting off the water spots, adding gloss and building up protection. Also smells great too. And then we got the two applicators. The one blue applicator is for your wake up application. If you choose to use that by hand, which we'll go over that later in the video. And then we have this soft Terry applicator that can be used with the sun setter when applying to the seats. All right, let's keep rolling. All right, so a couple other things that are not in the kit that I'm gonna use when I'm getting this boat cleaned up. That's another agenda I wanna accomplish in this video. I really wanna help you guys know how to clean up your boat properly at the end of the season. Not that you couldn't do this mid season, but this boat in particular has been used all summer. Uh, it's a buddy of mine and I'm gonna clean it up for him, getting it ready to be put away for the winter. So I wanna give you guys a full 
walkthrough on what those steps would be. So the other things I have out right here, you know, I just got some nice plush towels I'm gonna use with these products. I got some interior microfiber towels I'm gonna use. But I have these scrub ninjas, these are rad. So these work incredible with the solution multi-purpose cleaner to clean the seats. I'm sure you guys have all been through the struggle of getting in there, trying to clean your boat seats, scrubbing them with a brush, and it's really hard to get down in all the, um, like the texture of the seats, like the grain of the seats, you get all that grime down in there. And sometimes, you know, with a brush, you're just fighting to get those clean. These scrub ninjas, I'll take one out of the bag real quick, show you guys. They got this really unique texture. It's like a felt. So you take this, spray some solution on it or spray the solution directly on the seat, give it a nice rub down, some good old elbow grease. It just immediately pulls up that heavy grime from the seats. So we're gonna be using these. It's the same product. This is basically just a large one that you can put your hand in or you could hold like this. And these are called star scrubbers, same material but they're just smaller. You can kind of stick your finger in this way. You can get in some of the tighter areas inside the boat. So another thing we're gonna be using is the Hot Shot. It's just our regular car wash soap. Works incredible on the boats just to give them a good soak down, which this definitely needs before we get into doing some polishing and protecting. And then a very important product that we use when we are getting a boat cleaned up and especially doing some decontamination, you know, from it being out on the lake, you'll have, which you've all seen it, you get that heavy scum line down here. This one's not too bad. It has a little bit in here. It's kind of yellowish. You guys have all seen it though, man. It can get really loaded up down here with scum from the lake water. Smooth move, even, in, even though this is primarily a paint decontaminator for vehicles, we found it works incredible to decontaminate that scum line on the bottom of boats. It also really helps break down some stubborn water spots you could typically find under these rub rails. So I'm gonna use the smooth move in our wash process to help get that heavy scum off the bottom side of the boat. Another thing we're gonna go over in this video is I have the Griot's three inch DA polisher out with an HDO orange foam pad. And then I have the Griot's six inch polisher out. But what I've done is I've changed out this backing plate to a five inch backing plate. And then I've put a five inch HDO orange foam pad on this. If you're wondering why, it's not necessarily something you have to do, but to me, it's kind of a preference. This tool comes with a six inch backing plate I like to swap it out to the five inch, just as a little more agile when you're working, especially in some of these areas on the boat. And then I have the three inch out just from some, for some of the back areas. And what I really wanna do, or my goal in this video is help break some of that intimidation a lot of you might have when thinking of using a machine on your boat. You know, this tool is extremely safe it is not like a rotary buffer. It's not a force drive. It's got a nice figure eight oscillating uh, pattern that it does. It doesn't generate any heat. It's extremely user friendly. And I'm hoping with some of the tips I'm gonna cover in this video that you will feel more comfortable grabbing one of these and being able to polish your boat with a machine rather than just by hand. So hope you guys enjoyed that, got it all washed. Did you see how that smooth move was literally melting that scum line off the bottom of the boat? Check that out. So I'm gonna get a drying towel, dry this off real quick, and then we're gonna jump inside and give you guys some tips on how to use that solution multi-purpose cleaner and those scrub ninjas. Check this part out right here. 
got some stubborn water spots that have dried right in here above that rub rail. That's what the wake up one step polish and protect on a little hand applicator. Come in there, clean that right up. Cause that looks like it's probably even missed when they did their wipe downs, their <laughs> wipe downs, <laughs> wipe downs after they got off the lake. Probably had a couple too many selzers and uh, rushed the final wipe. Trying to get home for the barbecue. So this towel is actually a really good towel to use when you get off the lake with your aftermath. You just blast your aftermath over a big section and then use this shine supply drying towel to come through and just work off those water spots. I encourage you, especially, I think this is a large. Hold the end of the towel while you're drying so that that part's not flapping on the ground. And then you grab that end, you come through and you put a scratch in your boat because it's picked up some pebbles from the parking lot. So it's always hold this loose end. Unless you're up here, then you can grab both ends and just do a nice pass like that. Or like this, but you guys get the point. All right, so we're gonna grab the solution multipurpose cleaner. I'm gonna get one of these scrub stars or the star scrubbers and the large size along with a microfiber towel. We'll get inside this boat, see what we're dealing with. All right, so I'm checking these seats out and they're not too bad. I am just going to get a little bit of the solution. Actually, since the scrub pad is brand new, I'm gonna load it up a little heavy since there's no product on it at all. And cleaning these seats should be pretty straightforward, but some of you guys are gonna have boats where I see down in the grain of these seats, it gets really soiled. That's where this scrub ninja, just a few passes, it'll just quickly pull that up. You can see, well, hopefully you can see that brown, it's already, look at that. Few passes, it's quickly pulling that grime up. And then you just come through with your microfiber towel and just mop up the residue. Yeah, I can see a big difference. I'm sure it's a little tough with the camera, but you can see how dirty that pad got just after those few passes. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrub all the seats down with the solution, the scrub pad. Again, spray the product right on the pad, scrub over the seats, and then grab your microfiber towel and just mop it up. And then on these tighter areas up here next to the painted part of the boat, I'm gonna use the small star scrubber Again, I'm gonna put some product right on the scrubber. And then this will help me get right up in these little tight areas real easy. You can even put a couple fingers in this corner. Just quickly scrub these tight areas. Look at all that grime coming up real quick. Look at that. Jeez, incredible. Mop it up with the microfiber towel. Look at the, look at the difference right there. All right guys, a little pro tip with these scrub pads. You see how this one's getting pretty soiled? You could have a little bucket of clean water in the boat and midway through your cleaning, just drop this pad in that bucket, slosh it out and it'll rinse the pad out because it's gonna get loaded as you're cleaning. So you're pulling up soil rather than what's loading up in the pad starts to just transfer right back on the seat. All right, got all the seats scrubbed down with the solution. So the next step's gonna be to grab the Sunsetter, which is the vinyl light cleaner and conditioner. This has got heavy conditioning properties. It's gonna lay down a UV guard. So we always wanna follow the heavy cleaning session that we've done with solution with the Sunsetter so we don't leave the seats bare. We wanna leave them with some protection. So we're gonna lay down the Sunsetter and it's gonna give them protection against the sun damaging rays. It's gonna keep them from getting dried out. We're gonna apply this with the applicator pad. We're gonna spray the sun setter right on the pad and give these a nice rub down with the sun setter. What's cool about this product is it's not gonna leave the seat greasy like your typical dressing. So it's gonna absorb into the vinyl and almost be dry to the touch with all the benefits of being a conditioner. 
And then when you've used the solution multi-purpose cleaner, you're always following with the sun setter to get the conditioning and the protection. So when you use that, you need to follow with the sun setter. When you use the sun setter, you can use that independently as a standalone product for your maintenance. This pad's new, so we want to give it a heavier load up of product. And then once you know, I get the seat with a nice layer, I'll just add a little bit more. Stuff smells amazing too. Now a little pro tip for you guys. If you were doing just a maintenance wipe down on your boat seats, you've gone out on the lake for the day and you're just like, you know, I want to give the seats a little wipe down and they need a little bit more cleaning than the sunsetter with this applicator pad. You could change up what you're applying the sunsetter with to a microfiber towel and you're actually going to get a little bit more cleaning ability out of the product simply by pairing it with the microfiber, the microfiber towel because that towel has a little bit of grab to it. So it's going to help pull some of that light grime off the seat before you you know tend to go grab the solution thinking you need that heavier cleaning just try to use sunsetter with a microfiber towel rather than the applicator to get the heavier cleaning aspect out of the product that way So listen, if it was greasy, you know, you're not gonna be hearing that contact right there. So that's only been like a couple minutes, Minutes the product's already uh, soaking into the vinyl. It's leaving that nice dry feel. Now, if for some reason you feel like it didn't lay down into the seats like you want it to, once you're done applying the sunset, or just grab a clean microfiber towel and quickly just run over the seats with that clean microfiber towel and it'll level out any uneven spots that you have from applying the sunset. All right, so if your boat has carpet in it and you got a little stain in your carpet, what's cool is you can grab the solution, spray it right on that stain, grab yourself a brush, agitate it, microfiber towel, and it'll pull it right up. So another tip on your interior is all this hard plastic area, you know, that's painted. This. At the end, you can get in here with either the punch it ceramic detailer and a microfiber towel and you can wipe over all this. But typically this needs a little bit of cleaning. You know, this surface, it's got some, you know, water that splashed on it or maybe drinks have spilled and stuff. So I like to hop in here at the end with the aftermath. Spray a little bit on the microfiber towel so it's controlled. I don't want to spray it right on here and potentially get it on the seats that I've cleaned. So spray it on the microfiber towel and just go over this area and it'll remove, you know, any light grime on that water spots and leave a nice gloss and some light protection. All right, and this cockpit here, <laughs> all right, this, this, co <laughs> this cockpit area can all get sun center as well. All this area in here and here. And then on these Navi screens, I recommend just using just a little spritz of glass cleaner or some waterless wash like our EcoShine quick pass over this and it'll clean that up. Inside of the windows, the glass can get hit with the aftermath. It's a great glass cleaner as well on boats. All right, so a pro tip while we're in the boat as well, our clutch silica spray works excellent to revive the color back to these black textured towers. So you can clean them with like our EcoShine waterless wash, give them a good wipe down and then go over them with clutch silica spray. It'll bring back that rich black color and leave these towers protected. All right, guys, so we are ready to get started on the exterior of the boat. So a few things I wanna share with you before we get into discussing the wake up. So on a boat, you, got, you guys can see this thing has some light defects. Um, that's going to happen on boats, as you guys all know, man. You go out one time, you're gonna have you know, people getting in and out, you're gonna get light abrasions and some scratches, like surface scratches on the exterior of the boat. So my goal personally, when I'm maintaining a boat is gloss and protection. I'm trying to keep the gel coat he healthy 
and I want to keep it protected. So I do want to minimize defects, but I'm not chasing the defects, meaning trying to get them out in the same way as I would on a vehicle. Because you're going to go out a couple times, there's a good chance you're going to be putting defects back into the gel coat. So if every time you polish your boat, you're trying to get all the defects out of the boat, you're continually taking material away from the gel coat and you're reducing the lifespan of the surface of your boat. Okay, so most of you are going to be using wake up by hand with the applicator that came in the kit. So let's speak to that first. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shake the product up. Being that the applicator is new, I'm gonna load up a decent amount of product at first. I'm gonna keep it on the top half of the applicator, not the entire applicator. This thing's real nice and flexible. It molds inside your hand really well. And I'm just gonna start in this corner and work my way down this section. So by hand, what I'd like you to do is just kind of create an invisible line of the area that you're gonna work on. Typically, that would be like a two by two area. The more you spread the product out, the less polishing ability you're gonna get with this product. Now, I know you're already limited because you're using it by hand, but you're gonna notice you are gonna get some polishing ability even using this product by hand. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna spread the product out. I wanna start in the middle so I'm not shoving product down in this rub rail. Okay, now that I've got it spread out, I can come in and just start working it. There's really no wrong way to do this. I mean, I like to go back and forth motion, but then I can cross hatch a little bit. Don't overthink this. Just give it a nice rub down. And the more you work the product, being your passes like this, the more performance you're gonna get out of the product. So if it's a brand new boat and it doesn't really need any polishing, you're just gonna do a quick few passes because you're more going for the protection properties of wake up rather than the polishing abilities. If your boat's a little older and it's got some defects, you can really work this product almost till it's transparent. So if you see down above this rub rail, what I'm doing is I'm taking my pointer finger, I'm tucking the applicator down in that edge right there so I can really work down in this crease and get any hard water spots that are down in that area. Now, after you've worked the section, just leave the product. You'll see it dry to a haze. You can continue to move forward without wiping this off. Or if you choose to, you know, you're gonna typically be outside. This is gonna dry up really fast as you're seeing. You could wipe it off as you go. All right, I will say this about wiping the wake up off. If it's really, really hot outside, that's when you could do a section at a time and then wipe it off because it's gonna really set up uh, harder because you know it's the surface is super hot. So if you let it set up too long, you might be fighting it a little bit when you went to wipe it off. So if the surface is almost too hot to touch, just work, work a section at a time, wipe it off before you move on. Um, if the weather is kind of mellow, it's not too hot to the touch, go ahead and do the entire section then come back and wipe it off because the longer you let it set up, well, no, I don't wanna say the longer you let it set up, but if you don't give it a decent amount of setup time, meaning you know at least like 30 seconds to where you swipe it and it's clear, you're not gonna get the, the proper protection benefits out of the wake up. Well, I mean, I know this is kind of common sense, but don't start up in here because then you're gonna push a bunch of product in between all these letters. So I started down here and then I brought some of the excess up and then I'm gonna lightly go over the lettering so I don't push it all down in these creases. And that's where at the end, it'd be nice to have a little soft brush. You kind of run these lines. Or again, we're gonna get into a pro tip with Punch It on how you can stack Punch It on top of the wake up. And that step helps clean up some of the dried product around these lettering or the lettering. you definitely want to go over the top of these letters with the product because these letters can fade and get oxidized. 
Same with if you had vinyl graphics on your boat, just go right over the top of that with the wake up. You can even go over this rub rail. But again, you don't wanna have a lot of product on your applicator. You're gonna shove it all down in these screw holes. So make sure it's just a little bit of residual left on your pad and just lightly go over this area so you don't load up in those screw holes. Because these rub rails, they oxidize also. So this helps, look at, look at the black it's already pulling out from that rub rail. This helps put a little pop back, back into those. A little bling bling. time just put a little bit more product on up underneath here take your pointer finger you kind of crease the applicator pad in your hand you get your finger and get right up underneath that rub rail because that's where you're gonna get a lot of stubborn water spots that you're missing when you're doing your wipe downs Same with this letter, and I'm gonna go right over the top of it. In between here, back to the pointer finger. Boom. All right, so depending on what your preference is, you can apply the wake up to this point, and then you can use something like the punch it ceramic detailer on the hole, so you can get that slickness and protection down here. If there is something you want to kind of rub out on this lower area, you can go over it with the wake up, you know, knock yourself out how far under the boat you want to climb. So typically I will stop with it right here where everything's exposed. And then down on the bottom of the boat, that's where I'm going to use the punch it ceramic detailer to give myself that protection, slickness, help it clean up easier when I get off the water. All right, so this section of the video is for some of you that have bought this kit and you're like, hey, I would rather try to use a machine with the wake up rather than by hand. You're gonna want to pay attention to what we're gonna go over right now. So I want to contrast real quick the, the difference between these two machines. Many of you know, this is a traditional rotary buffer. This has one movement being a forced rotation. These require a tremendous amount of skill and can cause major damage. Typically, this is for professional use. But what I've noticed is that people are intimidated of DA polishers because of horror stories they've heard with buffers. These are completely different than this. Okay, this in comparison is a DA polisher. It means dual action. It's got two movements. It has a rotation but it's not forced, meaning it's not a gear driven rotation. So it's not generating the heat that the rotary buffer is. So it's got a spin, but the primary movement of this tool is basically like a figure eight. So when you work the surface with a DA polisher, it's not putting down a ton of heat, which makes it very, very safe to use. So I want to eliminate any intimidation that you have to purchase a DA polisher. This is a very, very nice entry level DA polisher. It's from Griots. It's got a very small throw. When I say throw, that's referring to the side to side motion of the tool. So I want to give you guys a few tips so that if you want to step up from applying wake up by hand using a DA polisher, I want to really, again, break that intimidation so you can feel free to grab one of these and get even better results. So let's go over a few things that using wake up with the DA polisher is going to give you over hand use, basically the benefits. So number one, you're gonna get a lot more polishing capabilities of this product when you pair it with this polisher. So if you do have some light defects, like you can see in this Malibu, we're gonna bump up the performance of this product just by pairing it with a tool. So we've got one of our HDO orange foam pads. This is a nice firmer polishing pad. And we are going to do a demonstration of how to use this tool for those of you that want to learn how to use a DA polisher and know how to use that on your boat, get better results quicker. 
then hey, maybe you could start using this on your car as well. So this is, again, this is a six inch with a five inch backing plate. I mentioned that in the beginning, why we do that. And then this is the three inch. You don't have to have this, but I, I at least wanted to get it out and show you guys because on some of the small sections on the boat, this is nice to have so you can get into some of those tighter areas. Okay, let's do a demonstration with this polisher. We're going to start by putting the tool on speed five. We're gonna take the wake up, one step polish and protect. We're gonna put some dots right on the face of the pad. Again, in the same way we did it with the hand use, we're gonna start and work a section at a time. Again, like a two foot by two foot area. We're gonna dab the product out onto the surface without pulling the trigger. And then we're going to plant our tool on the surface before even starting to pull the trigger. We're gonna give it about five pounds of down pressure. This, again, I do not want you guys to be timid doing this. It is almost impossible to hurt this surface with this polisher. So I want you to put some good down pressure, again, at least five pounds, because you need to make some sort of contact between the pad and the surface of the boat in order to get the benefits out of the product. So we're gonna plant our tool, we're gonna pull our trigger, and we are going to work straight lines over, drop down, nice overlap, and work each section with left to right passes. Again, just as we said, you know, with the hand use, if you want to cross hatch and kind of go up and down in some sections to really work the product even more, please feel comfortable doing that. Now, you're probably wondering how many passes, how long can I work the product? I like to work the wake up till it's almost transparent. Reason being is wake up does have a light abrasive in it. That's how you're getting that polishing capability out of that product. So if you just do a few quick passes and wipe it off, you're not getting the performance benefits of that product. So the longer you work it, the better performance, meaning that polishing ability, you're going to get out of the product. And then the same way with when we use the wake up by hand, you can do a section at a time. You can wipe the product off, know where you stopped with the polisher and then continue forward from there. Or you could work the entire section and then, you know, upper half of the boat, then come back and wipe it off. All right, so when the pad's new, I'm gonna apply more dots since the pad is dry to do an initial load up. But then moving forward when I, you know, after I work this product and I move on to my next section, I'm gonna drop down just to four dots. Less is typically more when it comes to this polish and protection product. You use too much product, it's not gonna cycle out properly, it's gonna load up your pad and you're not gonna be happy. So in this section right here, in this body line, you saw how I took the tool and I rested the front of the pad and I ran that body line straight down. In areas like this, all you wanna do is just lighten up your down pressure a little bit, just let the pad rest in that body line and run that as its own section. Cause you're not gonna properly get down in this section by trying to get it from the top or even this area. So front side of the pad, run along that section. And then this bottom section right here above this rub rail, that's where I will drop my head down and I will pay attention where the bottom of this pad is making contact because I don't want to be up over the top of that rub rail. So just when you're running this bottom pass, just take a peek down at the bottom of your pad.
and make sure it's running where you want it, not on top of that rail. All right, so as you can see in this section, I'm sure it's probably a little bit hard with the camera, but we did get a little bit of reduction in the defects. We did get some gloss up, but we're still gonna be limited, you know, being that we have a foam pad on this tool. So this is where it's starting to move into more, you know, in-depth polishing techniques. But I just wanna give you guys a quick tip. If some of you are out there, they're like, man, I really wanna get even more correcting ability out of this product. You know, I wanna step it up from the foam pad if you're feeling comfortable and you're, you know, want to take it to the next level. I have a microfiber cutting pad right here. And what you can do, you take off your foam pad and it, with the same exact techniques we just went over with the wake up and the foam pad, you can start step one with a microfiber cutting pad. And what this is gonna do, it's going to boost the performance of wake up to its maximum potential because now we're pairing it with a microfiber pad. And these fibers have a really nice correction, polishing ability just in the fibers in and, in and of themselves. <laughs> How would you say that? Bottom line is pairing the wake up with the microfiber pad, the fibers of this pad are creating more friction. So it's, it's getting more performance out of the wake up compared to the foam pad. So what you would do is you put on your product the same way on this microfiber pad. This would be step one. You'd work that area and then you would take this off because you're gonna see some haze in the finish after using the microfiber. You're gonna switch to your foam pad and you're gonna go over that exact section with the foam because what that's gonna do, it's going to polish out that haze left from the microfiber pad. That's not a bad thing. You're not damaging the surface when you see that haze left from this pad. It's just the nature of this material. That's why when you use microfiber, you wanna follow it with foam. So the reason I spread the product out with my fingers compared to the foam pad is being that these fibers, you know, it's almost like carpet. You know, you, you wanna just massage the product down inside those fibers so that when I go to tamp it out over the area of the boat, I'm gonna polish. I just don't have like big globs of product. So same speed, five. Drop the product out onto the area I'm gonna work. A quick comment on this. The slower your arm speed, the more correcting ability you're gonna get out of the wake up. Kind of makes sense, huh? I mean, if I go fast passes, I'm not giving the product time to work the surface. So you slow down your arm speed, you're gonna enhance the performance. So it's almost impossible to overwork the product. I can't stress that enough. The more passes I do, it's going to continue to work for me. Meaning it's pulling up defects, it's removing oxidation. So don't overthink this and be like, oh my gosh, you know, I've done a, a few passes, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off. And then you're shortchanging the performance of the product. So work it till you get the results. Check out the difference we got now by using the microfiber pad. Big difference, huh? 
All right, check this out. So you see there's a little bit of black on this pad. Don't let that scare you. The color is in the gel coat. So anytime you're really working that surface, it's going to pull a little color up. That's not a bad thing. That's because you are removing the light top layer of gel coat that has damage. So if you noticed, my arm speed was faster now that I've gone to step two to my foam pad because I'm not trying to dig out all those defects like I was trying to when I was using the microfiber pad. So now that I'm at foam, all I'm trying to do is get up that light little bit of haze that was left in the finish from the microfiber pad. So I'm gonna speed up my arm speed, quickly remove that haze, wipe it off. Look at that. Other than a couple of little deeper ones, which again, we're not concerned about those because that's gonna happen when you're out on the water. We got majority of the eyesores out of the paint. We got a nice gloss up, remove that light oxidation. Looks incredible. All right, so you boat owners that have new boats and you buy this kit, that's where I want you to not worry about, you know, using the machines and just grab the hand applicator, take your wake up, and just literally you could apply to this entire section all the way down the boat. You don't have to worry about really working the product. You're not trying to get the polishing abilities. You're just trying to get the protection. All right, lastly is the punch it ceramic detailer that we have in the kit. So what we like to do is you can either use this during your wipe off process of the wake up, spritzing a little bit on the towel and wipe the wake up off with the punch it, or you can wipe your wake up off and then do a couple spritzes of punch it and stack that on top of the surface after you've removed the wake up. Personally, I like to do a little spritz while I'm wiping off the wake up because for one, it just makes the product come off easier. I mean, it's almost like one pass because you got dried product, a dry towel. That's when technically, well not technically, I mean, typically, you're fighting removing product. Dry surface, dry towel. So just using the punch it as a little bit of lubricant on that towel just quickly wipes the product off. And then it's laying down even more ceramic properties on the surface, creating more slickness, more hydrophobic capabilities, and increasing the protection. I feel like you'd get more protection out of the punch it, applying it again after wiping off the wake up, but you know, I'm kind of a, you know, anything worth doing is worth overdoing, so I'm kind of overkill. So I'm gonna stack even more punch it on after this, but definitely do a spritz on your towel while you're wiping off the wake up. You're gonna really enjoy that. Okay, and then up here in these letter, in these letters right here, take a little punch it, spritz it right on the letter. Use your pointer finger and just work around the letters and that will quickly pull the wake up product that's dried out of those creases and you ain't gonna look like a hack at the lake once you dried out product around your letter. That's not how we roll. So what I do is initial few passes to wipe the wake up off, flip the towel, lighter pressure, couple more wipes, evens it out. You could use a second towel. I think you guys know that. So flip the towel, use a second towel. Don't overthink it. All right, final product to go over in the kit is our Aftermath Water Spot Remover slash Quick Detail Spray. I know we spoke to this product in the beginning of the video, but just a quick couple comments on the product again. It removes light water spots that have developed from the day you've been out on the lake. This is not intended to remove water spots that have been left on your boat for months and months and months. That's another video we'll do on our spot rinse and some other things. This is basically, you've gone out for the day, you pulled your boat out of the water, get your towels out, take your aftermath, spray down a section of the boat, 
Have somebody coming behind you, put your kids to work, wipe the product off. Make sure you, you pay special attention to under your rub rail on top, down in these creases. That's where the water spots tend to build up, especially underneath. Because you're typically just doing a quick wipe down and you don't take your finger and wrap it in that towel and run under this rub rail so you get bad water spots that develop underneath that rail right there. So easy to use, smells great. Another cool benefit is the aftermath adds gloss. So it's not just removing the water spots, it's also adding gloss and it's not stripping off a layer of the wake up that you potentially are gonna have on your boat, hopefully, because you got this kit. So it's actually gonna add to that protection rather than removing it. So typical water spot removers out there, they're strong and they work well, they get the water spots off, but they're stripping off your protection. Aftermath's not gonna do that. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoy this kit, it's incredible. Any comments, leave it below. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.